Think back to the last time you created something, literally anything, a website, a dish, a YouTube video, maybe even a damn tweet. Was it perfect on your first try? Because I'm willing to bet that it wasn't. You probably wrote a tweet, deleted some text, and then rewrote it with better wording. Most things aren't immediately perfect, and there's nothing more normal than going back to refine it. And of course, fighting games are no exception. There is a long list of messy first versions of fighting games that'll prove that to you. That's it. That's it. I'm going to the gym. But that's understandable. I mean, there's so much that can go wrong in a fighting game. Character balance, system balance, the actual coding. You can test each aspect of the game as much as you can afford, but some random player on Twitter is still going to discover a crack in the design and break your game in the first week of release. But with updates, we hope to see a game that improves more and more over time whether that looks like better system mechanics or better character balance. I mean, we all love Patch Day. It's an event. You know, I can't wait to see whether my character got buffs or whether they got nerfed or maybe even worse, no changes at all. But no matter what that change list might say, we can all find peace in knowing one thing. Your character isn't going to change so much that they become two different characters. But new 13 players can't say the same. New 13 is the zona of Blaze Blue. In this series, every character has a drive. It's typically their defining feature, and New's drive is the Sword Summoner. With this, she'll harass you with swords no matter where you are on the screen, but she's got a lot more than that in her arsenal. She also has Sickle Storm, a low hitting sword that travels across the ground, which can also be used in reverse. This enables long range mix up between her overhead drive and Sickle Storm. Spike Chaser, a wall of swords that appear from the ground in succession. This special move will cover the ground while you're busy covering the skies. Gravity Seed, a field that reduces the opponent's horizontal movement by 70% when they're above it. Act Parsa? I don't know, apparently this is a mistranslation of a car, but I'm not a car person. It's a teleport-like dash cancel that can be used after certain moves on hit or block. She can also go backwards too. Neat. For supers, she has Legacy Edge and Calamity Sword, which is her only reversal. New 13 is simple. Her toolkit is strong and her game plan is intuitive. Run away, fire swords. Her most prominent drive attack, 5D, that's this one, follows up with an easy go-to combo, but if they block, well, then it also has an easy go-to mix-up between her overhead, 4D, and the low-hitting Sickle Storm. Even if they block this mix-up, just keep zoning. You've got a plethora of great special moves to help you out anyway, and using them comes naturally the more familiar you become with the character. Honestly, I think she's easier than she looks. The fact that she's a super top tier is only a bonus. Yeah, New 13 was ridiculously strong in the first Blaze Blue. Her overwhelming strength is part of Blaze Blue history, and whenever people talk about Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger, she's one of the first characters that get brought up. Many things about this character are overpowered. Her drive was at its strongest, boasting great speed and shockingly low recovery, but special moves like Gravity Seed and Act Passer really shot her zoning and runaway abilities to baffling heights. The intense screen control, alongside a consistent and good damage output, good mix-ups, and a particular affinity for guard crushing, altogether made her too much to handle, even in a generally crazy game like Calamity Trigger. Arc System Works have a reputation for making questionable balance changes, and even they understood that New 13 needed several nerfs. But one thing you must always remember about Arx's balancing is that, even when they look like they're making sense, 
they're still going to throw in a change or two that makes you wonder if they're high. Let's see how New 13 looks in the next version of the game, Blaze Blue Continuum Shift. Please select your character. Okay, I'm looking for New 13, but where has my girl gone? Don't tell me she's been replaced by whoever this is. Lambda 11. Lambda 11? Right, may as well look. Wow. Oh, this is still New 13, just with a new name and a new palette. So I can just keep playing like normal. Not bad. Wait, th this isn't a combo Not anymore? Bad. Okay, um... Wait, what the hell happened to Sickle Storm? Wait, you're telling me Gravity Seed needs to recharge now? Why isn't Act Parser coming out? Where are my teleports? Ah, Spike Chaser. At least you're still the same. I'm sure you'll never leave me. So, New 13 has been replaced by Lambda 11. They're the same character, but they're not the same. You may be wondering, where is New 13? Why is there a new character in her place? If you really are curious, head over to the Blaze Blue wiki because I don't need Blaze Blue's confusing our story complicating this video. I'm just gonna label this change as Blaze Blue Story and move on. When it comes to gameplay, Lambda 11 and New 13 are the same character, the same zoner. I wanna make this very clear. Lambda is not a different character, she's just a palette swap caused by Blaze Blue Story. That being said, Oxus changed her so much that she kind of feels like a new character. Big changes aren't exactly unique to this character. Most of the Blaze Blue cast will at least see radically different combo routes between every single version of the game. However, New 13, Lambda 11, whatever you want to call her, is an especially big victim of these changes. What makes her different is that, although everyone else might get new moves and new combos, their game plan throughout this series will stay the same. They don't get new win conditions. But when New became Lambda, not only did her special moves and combos change, her game plan changed alongside her. Lambda 11 is the Blaze Blue Zoner. With her drive, Sword Summoner EX, she'll control the screen until she finds a safe opportunity to approach. Yeah, she does rush down now too, I guess. This character still zones, it's nerfed zoning, but it's there. A considerable amount of effort went into weakening her, like slower drive moves with greater recovery, drive moves no longer being jump cancelable, no more backwards act passer teleports, brand new recovery time on Gravity Seed, the overhaul of Sickle Storm, and the complete annihilation of her go to long range bread and butter combo. To make up for this immense loss, Lambda got some shiny new rushdown tools. So, she lost her Act Passer as a form of dash cancels, but now it's a standalone special move. She can do them whenever she wants, and two of these versions are attacks themselves. The catch is that she no longer has an Act Passer that goes backwards, but Arc System Works clearly wants Lambda to go forwards more than New 13 ever did. Just look at Sickle Storm. What happened to the saw that ran across the screen? My long range low! Lambda 11 Sickle Storm serves a new purpose. It's slow to come out and it doesn't travel very far, but it does keep them locked in block or hit stun. It went from being a zoning and mix up tool to a lockdown slash set play tool. Gravity Seed isn't spammable anymore and has to recharge, but it can do more than age or zoning now. It's become an essential combo tool, and on top of that, it's a DP. I don't know why this is a DP. Why did why like what? I don't get it. This move does everything, but thanks to its cooldown, you have to be selective of how you'll use it. All of these adjustments support a clear vision Arxis has for this character. They want her to approach more, and I completely get it. Arxis created an awesome character for Calamity Trigger. The visual design was great, her toolkit had creative ideas, and the overall package matched the boss character position that she was placed in for that game. She was a monster that could slaughter you from afar, as she waved her arms around like a conductor commanding a choir of swords to pierce you from each and every angle. They nailed it, but there's a reason why many boss characters stay unplayable. The Arxis balance team is definitely made up of stoners, but I understand why they wanted her to zone less. It's cool if your boss character is a projectile demon that wins solely from zoning, but that playstyle never really works out peacefully in a competitive setting. 
pure zoners are either more in levels of stupid or they're too weak to be considered a viable consideration at all. Most zoners are actually a mix of zoning and not necessarily rushdown but definitely some kind of close range aggression. As well as making for a better spectator experience, I think it's also easier to balance. Pure zoning just has little place in modern fighting games unless you want to deal with another vlog. That's why even the most basic bread and butter new 13 combos had to go. You can't play your whole game full screen now. From her drive, the only thing that combos is now Act Passer Blade. In ways, this move is a replacement for the old Sickle Storm. On hits, it'll send the opponent away so that you can keep zoning, but what about on block? I don't need to describe how this is a drastically different position to this when you're a zoner. But sometimes this is where you want to be now. The new Sickle Storm and Act Passes are all designed to get you there and the new Gravity Seed is good for your combos when you are here. But what exactly do you do when you're here? If New 13 was all you ever knew, then you may not really have a clue. Lambda isn't as simple as new. There's more to learn and you have to learn it because you can't get by on only one playstyle. You need to know how to zone, but now you also need to understand how to pressure someone who's actually within range of smacking you. You have to learn stagger pressure, you have to learn when to bait DPs, and you have to learn how to do tiger knees. Do you even know what a tiger knee is? Lambda 11 was the character that taught me how to tiger knee, on the PSP of all things, where they released Blaze Blue Continuum Shift 2. Yeah, she changed in this version of the game as well. Gravity Seed is not a DP in Blaze Blue Continuum Shift 2. Then they made Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Extend. To be honest, we don't need to do this one. Thankfully, they don't do this anymore, but Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Extend was one of the greedier old fighting game releases following a trend where you sell your players the same game at full price for a balance patch and some additional characters. Oh, did I say characters, as in plural? In the case of Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Extend, there was only one new character, Relius, and the balance patch didn't do anything crazy enough for me to talk about Lambda 11 in length here. Yes, all of her combo routes changed, but that's the Blaze Blue standard. It's a frustrating, but hilarious signature of the series. It doesn't compare to going from Calamity Trigger to Continuum Shift and discovering that every single special move works differently. Except Spike Chaser, which will never, ever change. Could Arxis have done this a better way? A way that didn't rewrite half of her moveset? Who can say? She is what she is now. I just hope that these adjustments don't have unforeseen consequences way down the line. Please select your character. God damn it, they replaced her again. For this game, Lambda 11 has been evicted and the original menace is back. But did her moveset come with it? Yes! We're back to where we started. The old Sickle Storm, the old Act Passer, Gravity Seed still has a cooldown, but we can't be surprised about that. Even her old bread and butter combo made a return. Lambda who? We don't talk about that. Let's watch some nine year old footage of me zoning someone. Ah, PS3 error. I couldn't afford capture card, sorry. But it's still better quality than Japanese arcade footage, so you'll live. Yep, standard new 13 game plan. Knock him down, let Spike Chaser cover the ground, you cover the air. Nice, the old sickle storm is back, you can zone with it like you used to. I don't remember being, like, decent. Oh, wow. I was kind of okay. I was okay at this game. Nice. Got him with the go-to mix-up. Okay, let's go me. Wait, what is that? Wait. Is that the old sickle storm? Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Let's go New 13 is the Blaze Blue Zoner. With her drive, sword summoner, she'll harass you with swords no matter where you are on the screen, but when it's necessary, she'll switch forms, changing the properties of every single special move, even the ones that look the same, and transforming her into a rushdown machine. Because of Blaze Blue's story, New 13 is back and her return inspired Arxis to bring back her old moves as well. But uh, if you bring those back, 
What happens to all the moves that your players spent three versions learning? We started this series with one moveset, then you made it something else. And for three versions, that is what we made ourselves embrace, because we had to. If Chrono Phantasma came around and Arxis suddenly reverted the moveset back to Calamity Trigger without any trace of Lambda in there, yeah, no, someone would have to be fired. I really wonder how much coordination there was between the story writers and the battle planners because the situation Arxis put themselves in for Chrono Phantasma is a little funny. Imagine the battle planners did all that stuff to Nu when she became Lambda purely for the sake of balance. Then, for Chrono Phantasma, Director Mori and the story writers go, Okay, Lambda is out, Nu is back. Bring back her old moveset. And now you're sitting there as a battle planner like, I have to find a way to switch all of her special moves back again without pissing off all the Lambda players because you decided to get wacky in the story? Fuck this job! <laughs> Now, Mori could have been working on both, this scenario is completely made up, however, the dilemma it presents is true. How do you bring back New 13 while keeping the players that embraced Lambda 11 happy? Remember that these are literally the same players? Do you make the hard decision and sacrifice every trace of Lambda 11, forcing her players to start over yet again? Well, of course not. For Chrono Phantasma, they stuffed two characters into one and gave her the ability to switch between each version during the match. This way, everyone wins and everyone's happy! Unfortunately, this made everyone unhappy. New 13 is the character we're playing as, but Lambda 11 is far from dead. She's with us in spirit, and you'll know whenever that spirit has taken the wheel because there'll be a halo above New 13. That's called Lunaform, which is basically Lambda mode. And the original moveset without the Halo is called Deaform, which is basically New 13 mode. This is a mode change character now, and you can't do well pretending that she isn't. Despite the impression that my round against the second slowest character in the game might have given you, you can't stick to one form throughout the match if you want to succeed. Arxis blatantly made this version of New with the vision that she'd mode change throughout the match. This is most evident with her supers. Calamity Sword is an extremely important super for Nu. Excluding whatever Arxis was doing in Continuum Shift 1, Nu 13's only reversal has always been Calamity Sword. You need this for the situation that every new player always ends up in. You're cornered and you can't get out. If you've got 50 meter in the gauge, Calamity Sword is your out. Without it, this character would be miserable on defense. In Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma, New 13 doesn't have Calamity Sword. At least, not in Dia form. She can only use Calamity Sword in Lunar form, and Lunar form can't use her other super, Legacy Edge. We get it, Arxis. Dia form is for long range, and Lunar form is for close range. You couldn't be more obvious, but was separating these supers across different forms really necessary? The obvious consequence of mode change is that it complicates some of her combo routes, and trust me, her combo routes are now very complicated. But the most irritating consequence of this convoluted design is the absolute helplessness that I am overcome with whenever the opponent is on top of me and I have 50 meter, but I can't reversal with it because I'm stuck in goddamn deer form, and someone thought it would be super cool if we split the supers up into different forms. When Arxis introduced Mel Change to New 13, anything simple about the character immediately got thrown out of the window. Her moveset is huge. All of her combos change depending on whatever form you start in. Her supers are split. Her game plan is still a blend of zoning and rushdown like it had been for Lambda 11, but now you also need to keep track of what form you're in at any given time. Like, did I even want the Lunar version of Sickle Storm here? Even her new special move, Supra Rage? Supra Rage? I don't know. Let's call it Flash Kick. Even her new special move, the Flash Kick, is unnecessarily complicated. You don't use this on Wake Up, by the way. It's not a reversal. In Dia form, it's pretty useless in combos, but it does make for a great anti air that you can start a combo from. However, in Lunar form, the Flash Kick loses head and vulnerability, making it a much worse anti air that you also can't combo from because they hit the ground faster. However, that's also what makes it a fantastic combo ender, so it is still useful in combos, but like, in a completely different position. 
It's a lot to keep track of, like how you need to keep track of the fact that Gravity Seed will combo in Lunar form but doesn't combo at all in Dia form, or that in Dia form Spike Chaser is a zoning tool but in Lunar form it's strictly a combo tool, or that you can faint Crescent Saber in Dia form but you can't faint it in Lunar form, which is funny because Lunar form's rushdown is probably where you want it the most. This character is beyond bloated. Do you remember how I described New 13 back in Calamity Trigger? New 13 is simple. Her toolkit is strong and her game plan is intuitive. Yeah, well, she's become the absolute opposite of that. In Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma, New 13 is hard to learn. Her toolkit is bloated and her game plan is convoluted. At the time, people were largely split on the mode change idea. Many players hated it, though I do remember being in the minority of people who actually enjoyed it. Okay, that was probably because I was a 13 year old that didn't care about competitive play. I did play to improve and I did enter tournaments but I wasn't thinking about what was best for the character competitively, I was thinking about what would keep the character interesting for me. I was having fun and I was really young so those flashy out there ideas always won me over regardless of their impact on competitive play. But upon review, it's clear as day that mode change was a bit much. There's no other way I could put it. I was lucky because I had years of experience with both New 13 and Lambda 11 separately before their unholy fusion for Chrono Phantasma, but getting the hang of this new form was still hard and I intimately understood where the two characters differed. However, for players who didn't have all that history and didn't have all of the information you've been receiving throughout this video, New 13 must have been incredibly intimidating. If anybody watching this happened to learn her in Chrono Phantasma, I really applaud you. Even I dropped her as my main for the first time ever and became a total cargo stan. But I also wonder, how does it feel? How does it feel knowing you put all of that time into learning New 13? Only for Arc System Works to completely overhaul the character again in the next game. <laughs> like, these guys are ruthless. One year after Chrono Phantasma, Arc System Works released Chrono Phantasma Extend. Again, two new characters and a balance patch at the price of a full game. At least this time, we actually did get two new challenges rather than only the one. Chrono Phantasma Extend introduced... Celica A. Mercury and... Lambda 11? Yes, they really did advertise Lambda 11 as one of the two new challengers joining the roster. Are you confused? It's not complicated, it's just hard to believe. It is hard to believe that Arc System Works were bold enough to call her a new character. She isn't new, she's recycled, but because New 13 stuck around this time, and they've given Lambda 11 this fancy completely ugly aura, they believe they can justify promoting her as a brand new addition. Lambda 11 is merely New 13's Lunar form as a separate character, while New 13 permanently plays like a super buffed version of her Dia form. In a Famitsu interview, Arxis explained that New 13's modes were separated into different characters due to the difficulty of mode change. I can attest, New 13 in Chrono Phantasma with her mode change was bloody difficult. Mode change works when it's given to a character during early concept. It doesn't quite stick when you try to attach it to a pre-existing character as some kind of fix all problems duct tape. Splitting them up is a good decision. Absolutely no clue how this impacted Blaze Blue's story though. Let's pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> the interview also explained that Lambda 11 will be simple and much less technical, while New 13 will be given many new tools so that she can remain complex even without mode change. Sure enough, New 13 was given many tools, far too many, but before we look at them, I think there's a statement I need to revise. When it comes to gameplay, Lambda 11 and New 13 are the same character, the same zoner. I want to make this very clear. Lambda is not a different character, she's just a palette swap caused by Blaze Blue Story. Okay, fine, I guess that's no longer true, but I didn't count on Arxis being this experimental and messing with the character until they really did split into two. As of Chrono Phantasma Extend, Lambda 11 and New 13 are officially different characters. The worst thing about this split is that I now have to pick between what character to play. 
See, every change Arc System Works makes with this character just keeps having unforeseen consequences that just lead to more annoyance. Granted, I'll take this over the complicated convoluted character she became in the last version, but this is still a little bit of a headache. I think New 13 was doomed to be a headache ever since she was conceived. We're at Chrono Phantasma Extend now, the third series entry and the sixth version of the game. New 13 players? Lambda 11 players, whatever we call ourselves, who are we picking? Lambda 11 is the rushdown zoner of Blaze Blue. With her drive, Sword Summoner EX, she'll control space and lock you down, then with the rest of her toolkit, she'll transition into rushdown. New 13 is the zoner zoner of Blaze Blue. In a return to form, her emphasis on pure zoning and evasion allows her to be a threat in every area of the screen. Okay, so. To be very explicit, Lambda 11 undeniably got the short end of the stick. As intended, Lambda is the simpler of the pair and is much easier to learn. Players that experienced New 13 in the first Chrono Phantasma wouldn't need to do much learning at all because Lambda is very close to her lunar form. And it's to the point where I genuinely have little to say. She got a new angle to her air drives, but the same applies to New 13. Uh, she lost that flash kick, but she gained a new special move called Exiganel? Exiganel? It's strange. It has invulnerability on startup, so it could be used like a reversal. But in actuality, the length of invulnerability is so small that it is very unreliable. Exiganel's best use is as a way to bait foes. The rest of Lambda's differences are very in your face, like this really unflattering aura and the aesthetic change to her drive. Can we talk about that? Her drive? Because I have a problem with it. Nu and Lambda have had a signature drive combo for years. It's one of my favourite parts of the character and one of my favourite combos in fighting games, period. There aren't many combos more satisfying than bouncing the opponent around with a legion of swords while new counts up in German and you juggle the opponent higher and higher. This is some cool ass shit, you cannot deny that. That's not even mentioning the addictive rhythm of the combo. Listen to me bashing my stick really loudly so you- whoa. <laughs> I wrote that? Listen to me bashing my stick really loudly so you can hear what I mean. Okay, it sounds a bit like the indicator on a car, which is fitting because um, New 13's special moves are like a bunch of references to race cars. But Lambda's drives have been altered in a way that ruins some of that combo magic. I'll play the clip of Nu doing that combo again, but then I'll play a clip of me doing the same combo with Lambda. See if you can spot the two differences. One. Lambda's drive attacks do their follow-ups automatically and this changes the rhythm of the combo. Instead of sounding like a car indicator, it sounds like Britney Spears. <laughs> 2. My actual problem with Lambda's altered drive. It's how much worse the hits look. Everyone I've talked to about this swears they can't see a difference, but I know I'm not crazy. Lambda's drives have far less bounce. Every single sword sent by Nu bounces the opponent in a new direction, which really makes this combo feel like a deadly dance. Half of Lambda's swords freeze the opponent in place and it just isn't as satisfying, but it's a difference that you definitely feel more than you see. And I have nothing else to say about Lambda 11. Easy to transition into from Chrono Phantasma, but needs more than what she currently has. New 13 on the other hand, changed a lot. Lucky for her, her changes were all about adding special moves and features rather than reworking existing ones, so New 13 wasn't an entirely new and daunting moveset to have to learn all over again. No, she's just DMO'd, except now she can special cancel a bunch of moves into one another, sometimes even on whiff. Her zoning is nutty in extend. New can block string four different drive attacks together, eight if you include each one's optional follow-up, and her drive is like a pseudo long-range wrecker. 
Gravity Seed now cancels into any other special move, even on Whiff, which is a very strong aid to her zoning. And any hits that new lands from long range can be converted into scarily high damage. Her other biggest change is to Calamity Sword. I already emphasised its importance and how the lack of access to it in Dia mode felt like a catastrophic situation to be in, but the good news is… Calamity Sword is back permanently! The bad news is that they've artificially given it a gaping dead zone in front of Nu that is pretty easy for the opponent to avoid. Calamity Sword may be back, but it's not the defensive tool that it once was. And that covers Chrono Phantasma Extend. What I find fascinating about this situation, these two characters existing together in this game, is how we're able to go back and trace how the hell we got here. You can go back to Calamity Trigger and see how every decision that was made was slowly, though unintentionally, leading up to this split. New became Lambda, and though I'm sure Blaze Blue Story is responsible for the different name and colour palette, the moveset changed because keeping New 13's pure zoning style was detrimental to the game, so Lambda was a zoner who also did Rushdown. Then New 13 came back, and so did her original moveset with some tweaks here and there. Things could have been simple, but Arxis understandably didn't want to throw away the moveset that they'd had people play for three different versions, so they crammed two movesets into one and created a brand new mode changing abomination. Now everyone's unhappy, and mode change is too difficult, so Arxis splits the modes into two separate characters where New 13 and Lambda 11 now coexist in the same game. A question that BlazBlue players commonly hear is, What's the difference between New 13 and Lambda 11? It's so frequently asked that there's a table on Dustloop Wiki detailing the differences between the two. That table will tell you what's the difference, but knowing this character's history will tell you why the difference. Alright, we've been through a lot, and truthfully, we've reached the point in New 13 Saga that inspired me to make this video. We've reached the split, and we've uncovered how we got here, how Arc System Works messed with a character so much that they became two. It's done. The video is over. Duh, but Blaze Blue doesn't end here. There is one more game in the series. We've made it this far, we may as well finish it. Just. Just don't expect a detailed analysis. Please select your character. Blaze Blue Central Fiction is the last game in the series. New 13 Saga has been full of twists and turns, but this is the end of the road. What you see here is what you get. The current New 13 and the current Lambda 11. We'll begin with New 13, the original. Off the bat, New 13 is entering this game in a situation similar to Calamity Trigger. She's too strong. Only this time, they can't nerf her by turning her into Lambda 11, because Lambda now exists separately in this series. Nu received a lot of general nerfs. Increased recovery on drives, decreased chip, her general damage is lower, and the properties of some moves changed, but the biggest change, and arguably the biggest nerf of all, is the loss of one iconic move. Systems activate. Spike Chaser. Rest in peace, Spike Chaser. The wonderful Spike Chaser has been replaced by a new special move called Luminous Slave. New can summon a sword from above her that will track and fire to wherever the opponent is, though the tracking is often poor. This move alone has three versions, one that fires instantly, one that fires slightly later but has less recovery, and one that doesn't fire at all until you press the drive button. Luminous Slave is a fun new move that quickly became pivotal to New's moveset. It serves as a combo tool, an additional zoning tool, and most especially, a set play tool. The match footage can speak for itself, but the ability to delay Luminous Slave's fire until you tap the drive button allowed for new mix-ups and combos. But was it worth it? Was it worth Spike Chaser? New 13 definitely has a better set play game with Luminous Slave than she did with Spike Chaser, but the loss of Spike Chaser was a massive hit to her zoning game. The importance of Luminous Slave meant that new players were forced to relearn several aspects of their character yet again. Every block string, every combo, every knockdown, all of them used Luminous Slave. But if you could get used to that, New 13 still felt familiar, which is a huge achievement at this point. She's just, you know, a lot worse. Trash, now? 
maybe not trash, but she's a lot weaker. Replacing a special move is nothing compared to changing the properties of every existing one or incorporating an entirely new mode change mechanic. But I still avoided this character the moment I found out she lost Spike Chaser. Screw that. Then, we have the final version of Lambda 11. Lambda also only really had a few changes, but they are pretty good ones. She didn't lose any special moves, and instead, she gained two new ones that are both attached to Act Parser. So, Act Parser, at least Lambda's version of it, was already very important to her. But the further adjustments it received made it character-defining. They now operate like a Wrecker series, as one version can chain into another. One of the new follow-ups is an overhead too, and these changes gave Lambda the additional help on Rushdown that she so desperately needed. Her game plan is the same. Her special moves operate in a very similar manner, all she did was get some new tools to help her out. Unfortunately, her drive combos are still horribly ugly, but at least she doesn't need to use them as much as New 13. And Oxus were kind enough to finally let her drive attacks combo into each other at long range. But... Unlike New 13, Lambda still can't enforce a good mix-up while staying long range. And I think that's how it should be. New can treat her drive attacks like a Wrecker series even on block. She'll mix you up, roar you out, and win the game without ever approaching, if you let her. Lambda has the same drive, but their limitations are sending a clear message. You can use these buttons for space control, but eventually you'll use her other tools to cover your approach and mix them up at close range. That's the clearest and most concise way I can describe the difference between the two. But you could always refer to that dust loop table if you want a more detailed explanation. But that's it. This is where the video ends. I've been a Hibiki main throughout this game, but for this video I went back to my roots and learned New 13. After playing over 100 matches, I can safely say... I don't like her. At all. I don't like her. She's too much effort. I want the fun mode change version back. 